This is one of my favorite videos that I've made so far, so make sure to enjoy this. These are some invasive lionfish here in Florida, and we're out of Boynton Beach, and uh, we go down to 70 to about 120 feet to find these fish. Now, a lot of people hunt these lionfish here in Florida, but we only hunt lionfish. We have a nonprofit, and we try our best to remove as many as possible. So sometimes we can remove at 100 pounds in a day, usually an average of 100 fish per trip. And of course, we are doing this because they have no predators here and humans need to be the predator that they lack in this area. Without this, they will quickly take over the reef after eating everything they can find. See that tube? You can see the cylindrical tube with the one-way funnel. So we put them in, but they can't come back out. Sometimes a tiny one will slip out. Now this one, I make a little mistake here. Sorry if I sound pretty groggy. I fell on one of my uh, on one of my fun little devices that I have and ended up really hurting myself. But uh, so no lionfish hunting this week, unfortunately. All right, this is going to be one of the coolest moments of my life so far. Coming up next, what is that, guys? You guessed it, the bottlenose dolphin. If you can see closely, this this individual has half of a fin which is very concerning to me because if the other half goes, now we're in trouble. But look at the ones coming in from the right and from the left. There's a t pot of about 10 of them, I, I would say, up there. They're very rare to see under the water because they can know you're coming before you even know they're there. And most of the time you just hear a couple chirps and that's it. But I got to see them. <laughs> Pretty stoked. Now back to the hunt. Look at that rock beauty and all these little grunts. Just search around for the lionfish. We go to these big rocky uh, patches we like to call islands. Uh, they're typically a whole bunch of sand and then you'll see an island and then another island and another island. And you kind of just look back and forth and, and go against the current until you find them. Now here's a rare sight. Alex got me some nice video of these coronet fish. This is the blue spotted coronet fish. See how it's got bands across its body trying to blend in with the environment. And for some reason, they're all hanging out in a big group together. This might be because of mating, or maybe they're just buddies. Maybe this is this is their crew. Look at how neat. These are relatives to the seahorse, or the pipefish. And this is a beautiful species of fish uh, we call the Atlantic spadefish. In other areas of the world, they're called batfish. They're a little bit different as well, but they're pretty similar and they act very similar too. The long, thin bat fish is over there in uh, the South Pacific and that one is such a pretty fish. Now this guy's so cute because Alex got some nice footage of this guy. Look how he's just walking away from me. And don't worry about me, I'm just no turtle here, just moseying on over here, don't pay attention to me. And another cute little, these are both loggerhead sea turtles. They've got some barnacles on their backs and that's completely normal. That's barnacles or are a thing. That's very common for turtles to accumulate some barnacles. It's not going to hurt them. And it's illegal to try to stop them and grab the barnacles and scrape them off like you see in some people's videos. That's technically extremely illegal. If I posted myself doing that, I could be going to jail. So none of that. Another nice lionfish kill. And look at that cute little guy. Little cow, little trunk, uh, cowfish there. That's what it is. Now we're just going from island to island trying to find our next lionfish. Look at that, honeycomb cowfish. Poof, see how he shot away? They can use, they can go pretty fast in, in small amounts. I'm trying to feed this lionfish to, oh look at this guy, he just kept avoiding me and avoiding me and avoiding me. Finally I get him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dispatch him and put him out of his misery and then I'm just gonna go ahead and feed him to these trigger fish. They were bagging me, and uh, the big one of the group is pretty aggressive about the whole thing. As you can see, I give him the food, but she's a little skeptical. Says, get out of here. Leave us to eat in peace. These fish are pretty brutal. There she is again. She says, back off. It might be a male, actually. The male is the larger of this, you know, in this species, the male grows bigger than the female. But that's still a fairly small gray trigger fish. They can get to be quite a bit bigger. They're called a trigger fish because 
They have a large trigger spine on the top of their head, which is almost mechanical. It is so sturdy and they can go underneath a rock and they can put it up and lock themselves into place. And that is such a strong spine. But if you go up and you were to push down this, the next spine down their back, it acts like a trigger and drops the front spine. So it's if you if you lay the flat one the back one flat, it's kind of our, like our fingers, then the front one goes down. And that's why they're called the trigger fish. The spine can actually be it's very sharp and it's almost like a piece of metal. Now look at the size of this slab. This is a big, fat old hogfish. Just cruising by, enjoying the day. Now hogfish, people call hogfish snappers, but really it's a hogfish wrasse. It's not a snapper at all, but it sounds better to call it a snapper in the food industry. You got a beautiful big eye over there. And a couple of my next. Now these guys kind of caught on to me. You see this guy? He goes, whoa, something's up, something's up. And luckily, I got a great shot on him. He is stoned immediately. I hit him right in the skull there, which immediately he's dead. See that that blur coming out from behind his head when I pulled him past? That's actually the blood. People say, why, why don't they bleed? They do bleed, but underwater, blood looks green. So if you look closely at some of my shots, you will see a little kind of like a fog around the head of green, and that is actually blood. If that was on the surface, it would be red. But since it's deep in the water at 90, 100 feet, you, those are the first spectrums of, of light, you know, of color to go away when you go down deeper. The, this is the red lionfish. It's actually red on the surface, but down here on the bottom of the ocean, it appears to be more of a black coloration or a really dark burgundy. Uh, but it's actually quite orange and very red in some some certain circumstances. Uh, they also can change color. This this is a very very good predator. They can change color to match their environment. If they're over sand and it's light in color, they can turn really light in color, almost white with very light stripes. And then if they're over a dark dark piece of coral or on a big barrel sponge, they can turn super deep deep blackish red. See how I wiggled the camera there? I, use, I do that to uh, make the lionfish look at the camera instead of the spear so I have a better chance at making a proper shot. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we remove these lionfish from these waters and uh, it really helps to get some sort of donations if even a dollar helps. So if anybody is willing to help us out, you can find my link to my Venmo on my page and that would be awesome. Appreciate it guys. Thanks for watching our videos.